All right, everybody. So today we've got Ken from Badger on, and we're going to talk about a little. We're going to talk about a little bit of maintenance, you know, myths and things that do and don't work with airbrushes. Um, I'm actually going to show one of my airbrushes and one of the problems I I may or may not be having with my airbrush. But for oh, you want to talk about air? Oh, what happened? Oh no. Okay, <laughs> now, now we're, there we go. Um, but for the most part, I wanted to start off by Can saying, if there's anything wrong, it's this guy that has the problem, not the not the equipment. So, because I I I I'd like to say I'm better with an airbrush, but you know that'd just be a lie. <laughs> You know, and well, figures we go. The only thing you can't be taught is practice, Josh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um, but for the for, but for, okay. Hey Matt. Oh man, what? Yeah, I'm at your mercy here. I know nothing about this stuff. I'm just happy to be here. Um, but I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if there's a delay or uh, or what the story is. Yeah, you're, you're kind of cutting out a little bit, but we'll try to work around it, okay? Um, the choice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Spunky. Yeah. What's going on, guys? I like to acknowledge people when they when – they uh, pop in if you don't mind. No, that's fine. I I'm, I got no problem with that at all. Um, one one of the things okay. I wanted to talk about is some people say like when you get an airbrush and you pull the needle out, you're supposed to like like redefine that needle point. Is that is that a is that a an actual practice we should so, all do or some people like. No, it, it's not in a do an extra polish on their needle tip. Um, you know, generally you're talking about a more experienced user who's knows exactly what he definitively wants that airbrush to do. And knowing how an airbrush needle is made, which it's a turn part off of a machine, um, you know, we do polish the needles, but it, it's it's not a it's not a high grade polish. It's a polish to make certain that the grooves that are cut into a needle as part of the turning process don't impact the way the paint flows off of the needle. So some of your more premier elite artists, because they're going to use that airbrush for extreme finite detail, um, will do an extra polish on their needle. Um, I, I wouldn't see that as a necessity for 90% of the people who are using the airbrush to get a good, clean finish on their models. You know, they're not, um, you know, not, not everybody is a straighter. Strives to be that or wants to be that they just want to enjoy their hobby, and the airbrush is part of that for finishing. If you're a guy who wants to be a museum modeler or wants to be a competition level modeler or, or wants to learn to do illustration like a Byron Lawrence or a Drew Blair, yeah, it, it probably serves you a purpose to polish your needles um, because it will provide a a a, a more meticulous uh, atomization. Uh, from the airbrush, but between you and me, for the 99 percentile, you really can't tell the difference between a polished needle and a non-polished needle because you're they're not a, and I don't mean this in a negative way, they're never a skilled enough artist to realize what difference that makes. They're just a fine model finisher or a photorealistic illustrator who does it for enjoyment and hobby as much as they do for the effect that illustration can create in photorealism. So again, I know that there's people that do it and to them, it may make a difference, 
to a lot of people, it's it's not a necessary element to it. And it's certainly not a necessary element when you're starting out in it. Um, because when you're starting out in it, you're not going to know the difference. And, and you're not going to see the difference. You're not even going to know what you're looking for in the difference between what a, 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 an airbrush comes with in the needle and what to expect after you polish it, you know, further. But, uh, you know, that's a, it, to me, that's a to each his own thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I know art. I mean, for instance, an artist like Byron Lawrence. Okay, I, I've used his name before, and you can find him in the Badger Airbrush Friends and Artist Group. He's probably one of the most talented automotive muralists and helmet painters and goalie mask painters. He doesn't polish a needle ever, and I don't really know a soul that could look at Byron's work and go, "Boy, his work would be so much better if he polished his needles." Because I tell that person, screw you, man. You can't do what Byron Lawrence does, so don't tell me he needs to polish his needle. You know, but to, to each his own. Again, that's a uh, uh, that's a personal preference. And, again, I don't think you get to that level of needing to do that or having it make a difference to you until you've become an experienced airbrush artist. So, I mean, frankly, Josh, just so you know, the, the thing that I tell people you should do every time you first use your airbrush, whether it's out of the box or at every session, first thing you do is seat the needle, make certain it's seated properly, which is to loosen the needle chuck at the back of the airbrush. Um, here, I happen to have an airbrush here. So loosen the needle chuck at the back of the airbrush and then seat the needle by backing it out and then sliding it in until it stops. Give it a little bit of a soft twist and then tighten it back up. That's how you seat your needle. Um, that's what you do with a new airbrush out of the box. For every session, to me, the first thing and the last thing you should always do with your airbrush is spray cleaner. Before you start airbrushing on a project, shoot cleaner through your airbrush. It's how you make certain your airbrush is working properly. Okay. At the end of the session, after you've done your last thorough cleaning, shoot cleaner through your gun again to make certain that it's performing properly when you put it to rest. And then, again, the next day, if, if your next session is the next day, start the day out shooting cleaner again. Okay. I and mean, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is that by just doing that, a lot of things that people have issues with that they blame on the airbrush, they can know from doing that that some of the issues they have may not be the airbrush. Because if the airbrush is shooting the cleaner properly, it should, it should shoot any properly ready-to-go media properly. So if you have an issue with a lot of tip dry and clogging, it's not necessarily the airbrush. Yeah. And that's a way you can know that because it was just spraying fine with my cleaner. Why isn't spraying it well with whatever paint I just loaded into it? Well, that's not always the airbrush. Sometimes that's the paint. And, 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 I, and what I, you got next? I, I, and I get that a lot, you know, like I, cause I'm, I'm, I'm not new, but I've, I've sprayed enough paint where I know it's, it's it's working or not working, you know what I mean? And sometimes sure. it's just like and and that that will come into play when we talk about the airbrush in a little bit, okay? Um but the next question I had ultrasonic cleaners, is it good or bad? Cuz that's another debate that you see every so often. <laughs> like again, like, it fall, it falls into that category of not necessary but not harmful. Um, you know, I, I, I think that the, the cause to use an ultrasonic cleaner is the result of not being diligent in other cleaning measures you can take while you're working with your airbrush. Um, for instance, I, I'm an advocate of minimal disassembly and constantly shooting cleaner, okay, because because to me, my experience in 40 years is the best way to have an airbrush always work properly is center through your airbrush before that paint has a chance to set up in the gun. So that means 
any reasonable opportunity to shoot cleaner, you ask yourself, should I shoot cleaner? And it's never a yes or no question. It's always yes. A lot of people will say they're shooting a black and they exhaust their color supply and they'll just go and they'll load more black in and they'll start shooting again. Okay. But they're not realizing that when you use an airbrush, you're drying color while you're applying color. And some of that color dries in the airbrush and eventually will become residual and built up. So the key to it is to get it re-wet and flushed out before it has a chance to set up and become a large accumulation that's going to affect how the airbrush works. So before I put more black into the airbrush, once I exhaust it, I'd put cleaner into the airbrush and shoot it before I put black in. I already got some black that started to dry in the gun. And that's the whole principle of, of an airbrush drying color while you're applying color. Some of it's going to tip dry and, claw, and, and accumulate in the gun. Um, so you want to get it re-wet and flushed out right away. Obviously, color changes are an opportunity to shoot cleaner. Um, and, you know, also a lot of people don't take into account that when I'm using my airbrush and I'm going to pause to do something that I think is going to take two seconds, First of all, I'll tell you it's going to take at least 20 seconds, if not two minutes. But I'll also tell you that paint's going to dry in that sitting airbrush as fast as it does on the model you're shooting the paint onto. So before you set your airbrush down, even if you think it's going to be a couple seconds and you can just pick it up and go again, um, you should shoot cleaner through the gun. Um, now a lot of people think you get to wasting paint and such with doing that, but that's actually how you learn how to manage how much paint you're putting into the airbrush uh, each time. That's part of the experience component. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I get that one. Um, but, but you, you know, uh, in, in answer, I, I didn't really answer your question, though. But and in, in really what I'm saying there is if you do those things, never letting paint set up in the gun, um, and things like that, you really should never have an accumulation of paint in your airbrush that would prompt you to need an ultrasonic cleaner to, to clean it out. Um, that's what, to me, the people that I see needing to use ultrasonic cleaners are guys that never do anything to um, habitually clean their airbrush while they're working with it. And we see airbrushes back here that we have no choice but um, to soak the crap out of them in a, in a really hot liquid uh, water um, and or put them in an ultrasonic cleaner because we need to do something to get what is now hardened dried paint out of, of and off of the airbrush. Um, had any one of those users in their usage of the airbrush gone through a simple shooting of cleaner process while they were using it, the airbrush would never get to that condition and that extreme measure to clean it would never be necessary. So um, now again, there's no harm in using an ultrasonic cleaner. And we do get a lot of people who contact us and ask what to use if they're going to use it. Our recommendation is just dilute some vinegar and, uh, and use it in the ultrasonic uh, cleaner because it, it's not, it's not so much the cleaner. The cleaner does make a difference because it will, interact and impact with whatever it is that's in the airbrush that needs to get cleaned out. But it's primarily the, the vibratory uh, function of the ultrasonic cleaner that's going to loosen and get that uh, that stuff off of the airbrush. And, and generally, I would tell never put your airbrush in an ultrasonic cleaner for more than 10 to 12 minutes at a time. For 10, okay. That, that's a good tip. So, so the other part of that is when you hear people say don't, they say it'll mess up the this part of it from from here or from yeah. the, like this part down is where. Yeah, you should always be. And the, the reason for that is this, uh, Jack. Every, every airbrush valve, regardless of your brand, Iwata, Badger, Pache, um, uh, Theron Chandler, Grex, Hotter, and Steenbeck, they do all have a, um, a rubber-type O-ring in the valve. 
Um, ours is Viton. I don't know exactly what O ring types all the, the other man. Okay. In fact, sure you use so I can't. If that O ring that's in there is soaked in a liquid for too long of a period of time, it'll swell. It'll cause the valve to not function properly when you depress the trigger to open and close the air passage uh, of the airbrush. So the the thing there is your airbrush should look like this, no valve on it. Okay, there's a valve. The valve attaches here. Yeah. Before you ever put your airbrush in an ultrasonic cleaner, just take the valve off of it. They come off of every airbrush. Oh, okay. Okay. But that's the re that's the reason for the cautionary uh, um, recommendation from people who don't think you should put it in ultrasonic cleaner. Quite frankly, there's nothing else on an airbrush that I'm familiar with or know of that would cause an issue with being in an ultrasonic cleaner for a, a short period of time. So, I mean, I'm familiar with our competitors' brands and products and all your inner – uh, O-rings and seals and stuff are, are PTFE, Teflon type stuff. That's not going to be impacted at all by the type of cleaners you would have in an ultrasonic cleaner vinegar. The only issue is that that rubber style O-ring in the valve will cause an issue. But quite frankly, you should never have paint in the valve of your airbrush. So there's no reason to ever have that valve in the ultrasonic cleaner. So. And that's some of the myths, right? You never know exactly who to listen to. That's why I thought I'd ask, you know, one of the well people that make airbrushes some of these I, questions. Because I, I hate to sound arrogant, but um, I I understand technical aspects of airbrush. Um, I would never attempt to give anybody technique advice on how to use an airbrush to create this. Uh, this effect or this uh, shadowing or stuff because I'm not qualified to do that. I'm an, I'm not an artist. Okay. I don't know how to do that. I know hundreds of people that can tell you how to do it um, because they've done it themselves successfully for years and years and years. But those same people aren't necessarily as well. I'm not, and I'm not saying that they don't know anything but they're not as well-versed in the technical side as, of airbrush as an airbrush manufacturer would be, okay? If yeah. you got a technical question on a Badger airbrush, take your advice from Badger on technical issues. If you have a technical question on Iwata airbrush, they have a, a an, an excellent uh, service reputation. You know, they have a guy by the name of Kirk Liebecker out in Oregon uh, who's very helpful and extraordinarily knowledgeable about the workings of their airbrush. Now, Kirk happens to be an extraordinary artist as well. Um, Pache has very good technical assistance. They know their product. They know how it works. So, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but I would never tell anyone to, to listen to artists at XYZ aspects of it are that should be of importance to you because, quite frankly, and no offense, I don't necessarily consider artists overly qualified to give technical input on airbrushes. They're as qualified to do it as I am to give you technique advisement on airbrush. And I know I can't give you any advisement because I don't know shit how to do a lot of the stuff you guys, you artists do with our products. So, Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... I, the I, other, the, uh, there, there's a lot of bad information out there. I can tell you that. And and that's kind of why I wanted to ask a couple of these questions, right? Because like the manufacturers are would at least know A and B, right? Whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, right? <laughs> I, I, I I hope so. I, I hope so. And, and I do <laughs> believe in the case of the reputable companies, and when I use that term reputable. OK, there are companies that sell airbrushes that have never made a single airbrush ever in the history of their company. They don't care how the airbrush works. All they, they do is want to put 
their name on it and technical knowledge related to it doesn't necessarily exist in a place that you can get it because if you contact them because it's their airbrush, they don't know anything about how that airbrush was made. They couldn't tell you what class stainless steel was the needle made out of. They couldn't tell you what uh, what type of brass the body was made out of. They couldn't tell you how the trigger linkage system was designed and developed um, simply because they didn't make the airbrush. Okay, They put their name on it and they sell a shit ton of them, um, but they don't necessarily have the internal uh, knowledge of the airbrush to be supportive as a company like a Badger, like a Pache, like an Iwata, uh, like a Hotter and Steenbeck. Um, you know, the companies that are making their products are reputable in supporting them with technical knowledge about them. So that's not necessarily the case with every airbrush on the market. So next question, Mac valves, right? Yeah. Hey, can you get that stupid thing off the screen there? What is that? That tray. Oh, I, I, I had it. I had the airbrushes apart. This thing's really great for keeping the parts on the table. So I, that's why I use that. But I can switch the camera back. I, I, no problem. But Mac valves, right? Can you really? Oh, he froze up, didn't he? Ken, can you hear me? You see me? Okay. We have to get you one of these. Josh. Oh, yeah. I, I have oh, that over by my airbrush. Yep. I, I see you. I actually Hello. have that. So you couldn't have laid that one on the table that you were going to pan to during the the, the show. <laughs> I could have. Yeah, I'm just right. kidding. I Listen, I, I am not anti Iwata. Iwata makes a very nice product, and you know, it, it to me to to knock a competitor of that competence and, and quality would make me an idiot. We make good products; they make good products. So you're never going to hear me speak adversely about. Uh, and a, a genuine Iwata product. So, and, then, and and you know, I, that's why I love this mat. I I actually uh, won this out of our good friend Gilbert's uh, Mondragon. He had a competition, and I won this and the tray. Okay, cool. So, um, a actually, I, I think I was with Gilbert when he bought that at Gen Con. <laughs> 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 who, who, yeah, okay. Um, but anyway, Mac valves. Okay, yes. so you're supposed to be able to fine tune these. Are you able to actually hang on one second? Hang on one second. Lay in low hobbies. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Josh. <laughs> yeah, you, no problem. Um, <laughs> but Mac valves. So, so really. You set the air pressure and then you use the Mac valve to dial it in closer or you just. It, well, first of all, it, that Mac valve is an Iwata item. Pack valve is a Badger item. Uh, um, Their stands for micro air control. Our stands for precision air control. I think there's a little bit of a misnomer as to what that function really does. It only serves partially. It, it, it doesn't adjust pressure. It adjusts airflow. Okay. Um, and yes, as part of that adjustment of airflow, it will bring a lesser pressure to the nozzle of the airbrush. Okay. But it still is being fed from your air source the same amount of pressure. It's just restricting it to reduce it as it gets to the nozzle. To me, the real um, effect benefit of a 
of a Mac valve or a back valve is almost to have it entirely on or entirely off. And what I mean by that is as you begin to suffocate the airflow to the nozzle, you can start to get the airbrush to create different effects in the atomization that it produces. And, and what it really is, is if you've ever uh, tried to crimp your hose to get an erratic spray pattern from your airbrush, or if you've ever seen like a t-shirt painter, um, they're not doing anything with their air pressure, but they'll take and they'll take a popsicle stick and they'll let a bunch of paint accumulate on it to try and get droplets to spatter off the popsicle stick. Um, the Mac valve slash pack valve to me is uh, at least our marketing of it and intention of it is to create the artist to cre create different atomization effect effects. Um, without having to moderate his air pressure at the compressor. Oh, okay. And he froze, I think. Okay. It, it's, it's it's much simpler to have it right at the airbrush and it can restrict that airflow. Just so you froze, not me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, looks like Tim's having a little bit of an issue. Can you hear? Um, with his internet. Oh, there we go. Now he's back. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I, I, it looks like I got okay. a good connection, so I'm not certain why he's doing that. I, yeah, it, it's just the thing about internet, right? <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Um, well, and I'm the most ignorant person on this stuff uh, uh, on the face of the earth. During the week, you'll often hear the cry of Dino throughout the building, and that means Ken's having a problem with his computer, and Dino, the IT guy, needs to come and bail him out. <laughs> I, you know, no. there's times I'm really good on a computer and, there, and and it depends on what I'm trying to do too, but yeah. I, I, I understand that. But for the, for most the most part, play Wi Fi, we have Dino Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my other question is what would be better on the airbrush or on the hose, the Mac valve? Cause you, you sell like the extreme, I, I don't know what other airbrush, but I have the extreme 105, I think that has it on the okay. bottom. Well, what would okay, be better? Okay, now, 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 now on, on, on this instance, for the Extreme 105, there's no reason for you to have a Mac valve or a pack valve. Sub does. That's already a function that exists on your airbrush through usage of the, uh, of the pack valve that's drilled into the bottom of the gun. That's very similar to I, um, Iwata also has a, uh, in a brush like that where they have the dial on the front end of the airbrush underneath the bottom side. Pache has one as well. We only have it on the extreme. Quite frankly, you know, even on the extreme airbrush, we didn't even want to put that on there to tell you the truth. But the three artists that we work with all said we should have it because I wanted they had a brush with that and Pache had a brush with that. You can't call in a group of artists to assist you in developing something, have them all tell you you need something, and then disregard it because then you have just told them, thanks for coming. This is just for show. No. I, and I don't think anybody has a problem with it. Uh, right? You know what I mean? It's, and you know. That's not the case when we bring our artist into assist us and possible. And because our air passage runs right through the bottom of the airbrush body, we could do it by drilling a hole right up into our air passage and then creating a screw that by turning it in, you could get into that air passage and reduce it to the point of actually shutting it off. Okay. Now, the problem with the way we did it was 
we did it with a single pack screw um, that on the original version of the extreme, it's a very loose screw. And it often times if the user held his airbrush a certain way, it could be bumped in action. So, well, so out of the airbrush, if they had it completely wide open for the air passage. So we didn't read this, but the brush now comes with a plug in the use the function. The uh, screw take the plug uh, in its current version. It's actually exactly like a brand new, normal, everyday airbrush that has a plug in it uh, um, if you want to use that function of the pack screw you can take the plug out and put the pack screw in uh, on it originally we just had the pack screw to open it up all the way but it was a very loose screw um, and oftentimes would fall out of the brush you're welcome laying low hobbies yeah Steinol res is something else our chemist Knocked it out of the park with that stuff. So, so Andreas brought up Steinol Res. And I, I want to ask this question, and you can choose not to answer it if you don't want to. But how come you don't do a retail side of that? Like like a hobby, sell it, give it to like Hobby Lobby to sell, or or is that just too big of a... You, you, you ever tried to call on Hobby Lobby and get them to put in a new product? No, but you know what I mean. I, I just use Hobby Lobby as an example, but you know. No, I, I I understand, and trust me, we'd love for it to be in Hobby Lobby. We've we've sent them information on it and contacting them, and you know, but it, you got to understand that to Hobby Lobby, a, a, a large mass merchant like that, um, it's very cumbersome to them to change things and add new products. So a lot of times, unless they're getting inundated with requests that, boy, you wish they had this product. You know, if I go to them and say, people love this stuff. If it was in Hobby Lobby, you'd sell a shit ton of it. Well, the Hobby Lobby buyer is going, well, of course you're going to say that you want to sell me product. Okay. Uh, it really needs to come from the other side to make what we're doing in approaching Hobby Lobby come back from the other side and have store managers and people saying, hey, buying office, people are asking for this product. If we had it, I think we'd sell a lot of it because we've tried to talk to Hobby Lobby about it. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, it's not anything we've been able to get in there. Steinol Res isn't a lot of uh, cottage industry uh, hobby shops, but without question, the the, the place it's it's most uh, found is on the internet. So, you know, the, the other part of that is you just don't have the, the thousands of mom and pop hobby shops that you had years ago um, that could make that product available. So, okay. So let's let's talk about what my issue was with this airbrush. So I actually thought I clogged this airbrush up pretty good. So I cleaned out everything from here to here. I put it in acetone and basically just I, all kinds of stuff came out of this thing, you know, and I'm still kind of learning how to clean this thing out better. Not had any issues with the Sotar. Sotar works awesome. But for this one, the, the nozzle just builds up paint. How do I – is there See, a that, better way that's, to clean those nozzles out? I mean, that, that's crazy, Josh, because the airbrush that you're having difficulty with is far more forgiving of an airbrush than the Sotar is. So that surprises oh, wow. me to hear you say – that you're having complication with the Patriot, but having extreme success with the Sotar, because normally 
the reverse would be um, the case. So, um, I mean, when you say you're having issues with the Patriot, what are we talking about? Are we talking tip dry and clogging? Are we talking bubbling back into the cup? Are we talking a pulsating spray? Um, what are we talking about exactly? So I'll pour, I'll mix the paint, right? Pour it into this and I'll start to spray. It'll start spraying awesome. And then just all of a sudden you can just see the spray just fade. And it'll stay that way until okay. I clean it back out. But then I'll, I'll thin out the paint again, you know, because I'm thinking, you know, it's not thin enough. And then, yeah, it, it, I'll start spraying again and it'll be good. And then all of a sudden it just stops. Okay. The, the key to what you're saying there is that it'll spray good and then it'll stop. So the issue is more than likely not with – I would ask you this. If you were to just spray water with that airbrush, would it ever be problematic? Okay, you, you cut out towards the end. But um, – no, I, I, What I, I, I asked, if, if you just put water in that Patriot airbrush, do you think it would ever stop spraying properly? Because when you, I'm sure when you start spraying water – it sprays properly. Would it yeah. ever stop spraying properly before you exhausted the the uh, supply of water that you loaded into the cup? What water would spray absolutely fine through this thing. Okay. So the thing about that then is that that tells me the airbrush is working properly. So the issue you having is not necessarily with the airbrush. It's with something else. It's with the paint it's with the air pressure um you know there are different things to look at because all all that's happening if your airbrush is spraying properly and then it diminishes and becomes uh, uh, spraying erratic clog uh, i think did, did i cut out there yeah you kind of did it, I, it's I, th I think I cut out there. Okay, there's a couple things you can do. Well, let me ask, um, what paints does this most occur with? So I, I use like craft or not. I do use craft paint and I get it to work fairly well, but it's it's that acrylic or the um, artist paint, you know? Yeah. Well, one of the things I would tell you is this, Josh, when you're talking craft paint if you're talking apple barrel or plaid yeah. or uh, and, um you know something that you pick pick up at michael's in the craft aisle uh, um is those are not necessarily made to be large is finely ground because it has to pass through a nozzle, very small aperture to it. So what happens is with a craft paint, your tip dry and clogging is going to happen faster. And the reason for that is think of pigment in paint like people in a room. When someone yells fire and all the people go for the door, mm -hmm. OK, if the room is filled with thin people, they get out pretty fluidly. OK, through the doorway. If your room is filled with fat people, they're going to clog up faster at the doorway and not get out. OK, that's what your pigment is doing with your airbrush, because your pigment is fat people. It's rushing to the door and backing it up faster than if you had a finely ground pigment in the paint that you're using. That's that's part of of what you're creating when you're using craft paint, which is intended to be brushed on, not airbrushed on more so. I'm not saying that you can't get it to spray. You can, but it's going to more likely clog your airbrush much faster. Yeah. And, and, and see the, than the, the, a, a, the uh, fine article uh, will, like, paints. 
and 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 the the funny part is, like, I I took I took the airbrush and I took, cause, and I took the paint from that cup and I put it into the sotar and the sotar shot it just fine. <laughs> so it's like, I it, it's that never ending you're, battle. You're a freak of airbrushing. I I yeah. don't know, right? You're I, a freak just, of airbrushing. Let me ask you this. Well, well, let me ask you this question then. Um, do you change your air pressure at all when you go from the Patriot to the Sotar? No. I try to stay right about 30. Okay. Oh, you're at 30 PSI? You're yeah. you're higher than you, you're higher than you need to be, Josh. I but, mean, both of the both of those guns, I'd start around 15 to 20 PSI. Oh, okay. It's going to do it's going to do two th what happens is the higher the pressure you're at, the more tip dry and clogging you're going to experience. Because going back to that um, drying color, when you're applying color, being part of airbrushing, the higher the pressure you spray at, the faster that occurs. You know, think about uh, if you try to try to dry something by blowing on it, you don't blow softly on it; you blow hard on it. Okay, because that'll dry it faster. Same thing with your airbrush. If you're at 30 PSI, your drying of whatever you're shooting is going to happen much faster than if you're at 15 to 20 PSI. I'd play around with reducing my pressure a little bit. A couple other things that you can uh, do is um, with your craft paints, if, if there's a generic uh, retarding agent to slow their dry time, put some of it in the craft paint step my oh man help a little <laughs> bit cuz that'll slow the paint's dry time the other thing is um, we have a product called needle these are things that are designed to help reduce the occurrence of tip dry and clogging, you coat the needle with that, and it prevents the paint from sticking on it so easily. Um, try those things if you haven't already um, to see if that helps as well. So, but it, it's it's kind of funny. I, I I'm surprised to hear that your Patriot is the more problematic uh, of the two <laughs> airbrushes that you have. That's, that's well, not and, the norm, and and the engineering of it. Um, uh, you know the the aperture size of the nozzle, the linear airflow, the angles of the needle would tell you um, that that shouldn't be the case. So it's kind of unique and interesting that that is the case. So, yeah, like I said, you're a freak of airbrushing. I And like I said at the start of this, it's not the equipment. It's this guy right here. This <laughs> is the problem. And, and it's fine, you know, because I'm still trying to well, but, learn. It, but it, it, it was practice. The more you do it, and yeah. experience the things you're experiencing and find the ways to correct them, the better you're going to become at it. You know what you're going to know what to anticipate. You're going to know what's going to happen um, before it happens and, and address it so that it doesn't be, become an issue uh, for you. So, you know, it's. Well, uh, and, and like you ask some of the forums and you're like, they're like, yeah, you need to reduce the paint more. And I was like, well, if it didn't work in the one Oh five, but it works in the SOTAR. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 am I doing? But I got to tell you, just I, I I got in in defense of the people in the forums. I got to tell you, I couldn't respond to that either. I couldn't tell you why your Patriots doing it, but your uh, but your Sotar uh, isn't. I'm glad to hear that your Sotar isn't. But I know that your Patriot is used for different things that you want to be able to use it for that your Sotar can't do as well. Um, so you'd like to not have any issues when using the Patriot for what you're using the Patriot for. Uh, well, let me ask you this. When you use the SOTAR, are you using it definitively for detailing work, micro detailing work, or in, and it's not giving you issues? But when you're using the uh, Patriot, you're using it for more general purpose application, and it is giving you issues? I, I like, I, I will use for like base coats, you know what I mean? Like base coats on the car. Um, 
yep. is what I try to use the 105 yep. for. And then I, I go in with details with the Sotar. But, right. you know, it, it, and that's so why I got using the, it in the right way. You know, yeah. so I could really well, adjust it, the it, Sotar down too. Well, and again, I, I think that's part of where that Mac valve is a little bit deceptive. Okay. Okay. Um, I would tell you, get your pressure down on your compressor first. Okay. And, and take, take the Mac valve out of the equation. Okay. So make the Mac valve wide open. Set your air pressure 15 to 20 PSI. Um, I see that Matt uh, is put here. He uses his SOTAR about 12 PSI. Now, I don't know if he has a Patriot and what he uses his Patriot at, but 12 PSI is a very good PSI for doing micro detailing work because you get uh, more control working at a lower air pressure. Obviously, you can't get too low. Otherwise, you don't get a crisp atomization from your airbrush. But uh, in any case, so. But, you know, you got to keep playing with with it um you know somewhere out there there's a rhyme or reason why what you're experiencing is what you're experiencing and you know that's why i kind of i i kind of like wanted to talk to you right because it i mean i i i didn't think it was the airbrush i thought it was this guy but you know, maybe, maybe there was something wrong with it. You know, I, I just wasn't sure. Well, That's why I thought. I'd, well, I'd, I'd, I, I I don't know that there's I, I don't know that there's anything wrong with it. Um, and I, I and don't take this the wrong way. Maybe it's that you're not not quite yet in tune with how to use it, and you're finding that out still. And yeah. as you continue to find that out, these things will work themselves out. Um. Okay, so Matt put on here, and I don't know if you've been watching the comments, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, Matt uses an Omni 4000 uh, for his general detail work, like you use higher pressure because it's a more general detail application. Um, <clears throat> um, Laying Low Hobbies. Um, does Laying Low Hobbies have a name? I, I don't like calling them Laying Low Hobbies. I, maybe that's on his birth certificate. I don't know, but. Um, on, uh, Andreas is a pretty cool guy. So, what is it, Andreas? Andreas. Hey, Andreas. Nice to meet you. Uh, um, but, but uh, yeah, see, he's spraying about twenty psi. You're spraying at a little pressure um, that that needs to be uh, figured out uh, with it. Maybe there isn't anything else that needs to be figured out with it. Maybe there is. You won't know until you get into that 20 PSI range and see what it's doing there for you. Um, but, you know, so some things are easily figured out through trial and error, and other things take a little more time um, to get to the end result that you want to have uh, uh, with it. And, you know, that's, I, I think that's part of the fun of airbrushing. I and mean, obviously, you never want to get to the point of frustration where you're throwing your airbrush at the wall, um, regardless of the brand. And, uh, you know, but uh, th there's a learning curve with it like anything else. It's a skill um, to be learned. So um, in any case, and that's one of the areas that I, I hope Badger is helpful with end users who are growing in their airbrushing uh, process. So. Um, you know, we do the best we can in that regard. We like to think we're one of the more supportive companies in the industry. And if there is ways we can help, we try to do that. You know, we're not perfect, um, but we try to try to be perfect, you know, and uh, each, each day we will never be perfect because we've made mistakes in the past. So far today, we're perfect. Uh, yes, so far today. <laughs> there you go. Right, you know, and, and that's really how we operate. I mean, we come in every day and we're perfect, okay? And when we make a mistake, the goal becomes let's spend the rest of the day being perfect again. You know, that's uh, – uh, we, we know we're not going to be perfect. We're hum human beings, but we're not perfect for a lack of trying uh, to be perfect. So, in, a, in any case. So, what else we got here? Um, it's my Saturday. We're on 50 minutes now. You know, the, the check you're going to set is getting bigger and bigger, Josh. 
You know? Ah, ha, 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 ha. I, so, which, by the way, did you get the contract with the appearance fee and stuff? Because I don't think I got hey, that back yet. Hey, how about how about it, we it send it for to my, it for my agent? Hey, we'll just send it to Gil. He'll take care of it. <laughs> Gil's my agent. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just Son kidding. of a... I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I, actually, I try to keep these at about an hour. So if you're wanting to go, usually at the end of these, I give the no, person no, I interview a, a chance to ask no, no. ask me questions. I, If you want. I'm I, The only other question I had... Was what's better, thinner, acetone or thinner? Because it's kind of the thinning? same thing, right? What are you thinning? No, 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 no. For cleaning, cleaning it out. Well, uh, well, what type of paint are you trying to clean out? Well, I, I, I also use the Wicked brand. I, I, I haven't okay. done enamel now, yet. Now, Wick, Wicked has a solvent in it, so yep. Wicked and acetone is a good cleaning agent. But if you're dealing with um, a, a, a water-based acrylic paint, you don't want to be using an acetone because if you don't get everything flushed out, you get a pretty nasty, gummy coagulation of material in the gun. Uh, the best uh, spray-through oh, cleaner... Oh, maybe that's some of my problem. The, the best spray-through cleaner, emphasis on spray-through cleaner uh, for water-based acrylic, is an ammonia based cleaner you know you can take some windex and dilute it 10 to 1 we actually have a product called spray through cleaner which is a ammonia based cleaner ammonia will break down an acrylic problem with ammonia and airbrushes is if ammonia and brass are um, have prolonged exposure to each other the ammonia will um, deteriorate the brass so you don't ever want to soak your airbrush in ammonia and you don't ever want to leave an ammonia-based cleaner sitting in your airbrush um, for a prolonged period of time because that will damage it. But as far as a spray-through cleaner goes, um, an ammonia-based cleaner is your best cleaner for a water-based acrylic paint. Emphasis on spray-through cleaner. Oh, so um, as far as so, – well, it, it very well could be if you're using a cleaner that isn't compatible with – what it's cleaning what? out of the gun and some of that's getting left in the gun, it, it could potentially cause a, uh, uh, a, a, a an, an issue. But the way to find that out, Jess, is simply throw some water in the gun and see if it shoots properly. Mm -hmm. no, you know, because yeah. if, there's some, if there's something that's going to cause an erratic spray, it's going to cause an erratic spray with water just as much as it would with a properly reduced acrylic paint. So, And, uh, like I let Andreas and and me use that Jesus juice that Gil uses, and that's usually what I spray through the yeah, gun yeah, first, yeah. and then and then water, you know, to <laughs> make sure I don't leave well, anything in it. But and I love Gil, but I, I'm never a big fan of concoctions um, for clean. But you know what he does works for him, and if you do it exactly as he does it. It should work for you as well. So, yeah. um, but oh, I, did he freeze again? <laughs> I, 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 All right, you're um, from, from a Manufacturer's perspective, we hello. Hey, hey, there you are. Oh, hey. I, I thought I lost. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 been that kind of day, but yeah. Um, well, I, I was I was saying from our perspective, when it comes to cleaning, we want to keep it as simple and foolproof as possible. You know, so we're not we're never okay. going to be advocates to mix this with this to do this uh, with it. So. I mean, to me, the simpler it can be made and the end result being what is sought being reached, um, you know, that's the 
it, it's the equivalent of the shortest point between the, the shortest point between two locations is a straight line. Yeah, you know. So that's kind of our approach to how we develop cleaning procedures and products uh, for doing it. So uh, anyhow, so what else so, you got? I, uh, I should, uh, I, I don't know who all uh, views this stuff. I only 20, so, 2021, which uh, is. Uh, go ahead, Josh. I was going to say, I didn't hear anything, but I think you were trying to plug your airbrush contest right now, right? No, no, it's not a contest. It's a it's a sale. Okay, we, sorry. We, uh, I... Yeah, no, no, no. We uh, we did haven't done any cons since uh, uh, the last trade show we did was February 2020. And uh, we made a conscious decision that we weren't going to do anything again till February of 2022, both events being the International Toy Fair. So because, you know, we haven't had interaction with the trade show convention audience, we, we're doing an event where anyone who would normally buy an airbrush at a trade event, they can actually buy it for that same price that they'd get it at a convention for. That's non-con 2020. 2021. You can see the sign there behind me, I think. So, but that actually starts the first session of it starts this Thursday. Oh, okay. The, no, that's cool. The, the, the 23rd. So, so if you were to come visit us at a trade show like Adepticon or Gen Con or, or Reaper Con or IPMS Nationals, you can walk up to our table. A Patriot, 65 bucks. A Sotar's, 85 bucks. That's what you can buy at during non-con 2020, 2021. So, and it's a and it's immediate shipment event. It's not like our happy birthday where you wait six months to get your airbrush. So, are, so that's are coming gonna, up. Are you going to do the birthday sale again? Because I, I know a lot of people enjoyed that. I'm not sure you yeah. did, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I a lot of people I'm sure enjoyed it, but none of them were in this building. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's it's a topic of conversation. You know, the crazy thing about it is, Josh, it, there's a good chance we'll do it again. The problem with it is that we're a positive energy company. You know, we try to have a positive outlook in everything we do, and without fail, it only takes one asshole to really make things frustrating and, and uh, unenjoyable um, for you. And, you know, we're, we're human beings that, at least in my case, tend to focus more on the negative uh, in, in hopes of the problem of solving it, but still you focus on the negative and you don't see the positive. For example, I've got a YouTube video out there, you know, that has 100,000 views on it, and it's got like, 800 likes and 12 dislikes. And all I can do is focus on those 12 dislikes and go, what the heck did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, and to try and figure it out. But, uh, uh, you know, but but that's what happens with happy birthday and why it, it is something that it was certainly um, a relief to have some time off from it. Um, this coming birthday is 58. So, yeah, we'll, we'll probably do it again. I think we'll see how non-con 2020, 2021 goes and how much gap there is between the end of that and when we would start happy birthday. Okay. I do know something that was the last time. So anything's on the table as a possibility uh, for us. But quite frankly, we're so backlogged, um, which we have been throughout the the pandemic um, just just because um, it's hard to get that materials right, right now even non-con 2020 2021 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. all those brushes all all those brushes all, are gone. remade yeah, they're already made. I mean, I could actually walk to the factory right now and 
uh, show you where there's, well, I'm not going to carry my computer back there, but there's stacks of airbrushes on the tables. The, and that's actually the non-con 2020, 2021 is a limited uh, availability thing. Everything's going to be set so that once an item is gone from what we have built for it, you can't order it anymore. So, no, that's a, that, that's a that's a different approach. That that's cool. Well, you know, it's it, cool. to have an event with immediate shipment. We have to do that. Um, you know, yeah. because if we're going to promise immediate shipment, we want to make immediate <laughs> shipment. If if more gets ordered than we have made, then we can't necessarily. Guarantee those people after what was made will get their shipment immediately. So, so anyway, we're we're getting down to the end of this. I usually let the person I interview ask me anything they want. I mean, it's only fair, you know. I get to, you know. Oh God. What would be a good question? Um, let me see what's on your background there, see if there's any questions to ask about that. Oh, you know what? I know what you're – you, you want to see the title. Who's, uh, what's that? Her, uh, no, actually, I've got my question, Josh. You can come back on camera. Okay. okay. I, I want to know who cuts your hair. <laughs> so so the short answer is me <laughs> but that's because i have none i have none on top i just gotta cut sides it's pretty simple here I'll, I'll show you the one of the things i've been working on you're not going to get your head shaver are you <laughs> no <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> that's funny though Is that a Gundam or a Transformer or a damn? This is part of the Forge World. It's about three feet tall. It's the Warlord Titan I've been painting. Um, I don't know if it'll show, but it's about three feet tall. That's not everything. That's just the body. But uh, yeah, that's it's pretty, pretty bad. I mean, I'm not into the. Modeling stuff, but that's pretty badass. I'm a baseball card collector. You know, you guys have your hobby of uh, of fine scale modeling and stuff like, like that. The, what that is to you, baseball card collecting is to me. So yeah, you know, I I and this has been one of the things I've been using the 105 on a lot lately. Um, Excellent. It's, it's base coats and stuff. Excellent. So. It's a great yeah. piece. I'm going to look forward to seeing it when it's done. Make sure you post some pictures in the Badger Airbrush uh, Facebook uh, group. Oh, yeah, no problem. I can do that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I'll just set this over here. Um, anyway, if uh, you don't have any other questions, I'm going to actually end this. All right. Because we're a little over an hour. All right. Well, I appreciate you asking me to come and hang out with you. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Th thank you for coming on, too. I know we kind of had to work this out a little bit, but that was perfectly okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I, for that. It, it's no big deal, man. I, I try to be flexible for all these. Like, I've done one at, like, 11 o'clock at night, and the guy was on the East Coast. <laughs> So that's cool. I, I mean, I, I I've just, done these in goofy hours myself because I've done them with people in England and uh, and in Holland and in, in Australia. So yeah, I, I know exactly what you what you mean. I mean, I anytime I'm doing something with someone in Australia, I'm doing it at seven or eight o'clock at night my time, and it's nine in the morning over there. Hey, anytime you want to, you know, if you got a subject you want to discuss and uh, I can contribute, let me know. Yeah, no problem. I I would take you off screen for a minute and then I'll end the show and then we'll have a conversation afterwards, okay? Okay, and sure. And I'll see you in a minute. Asta. Oh, is it going to? All right, everybody. So that was Ken from Badger. I definitely learned some stuff this week. 
I, I'm not saying I'm the best airbrusher in the world because that would just be a lot. But I definitely learned I've got to do some more homework. and Or not homework, but practice. Um, but anyway, next week, we are going to be talking to James Darby, someone that used to make House of Color paint. And that's going to be the big topic for next week. I think we're even going to talk about a little bit of his stash that he has. You know, we'll figure it out as we go along, but see you guys next week. Later.